Hi, my name is Tanya. I live in Petersburg, New Jersey in Cape May County. My son Rory is the oldest of my five children and he has always been very active, uh, very funny, but also compassionate and, um, you know, kind of a very loyal person. From when he was in kindergarten, he loved the show, um, the, all the fishing shows that were on Deadliest Catch. He was always gonna be on the Deadliest Catch. That's all we ever talked about. He loved fishing. He really felt that he was an inventor. All his inventions really had to do with fishing. So he found this kayak that was for sale and he convinced me to drive up to an hour away to pick up this kayak and we got there and there were holes in the kayak. And I just couldn't believe, he said, it was only $70 though. It was a great deal. I'm gonna fix it, I have, I have plans for it. It's gonna be a fishing kayak. That was the excitement for him, it's all of that part. And I really think it didn't even matter if he got a fish because he never seemed to be disappointed he came back without fish. And it was always about the excitement. And he told me that when he was fishing, um, it was the only time he felt good, that he, he felt free. So I can understand. The two necklaces I'm wearing are um, for my son, Rory. Um, the one is an anchor uh, because of his fishing. The other one is his fingerprint that we had taken after he passed away. On the back of it is his signature. I believe Rory started using substances when he was in seventh or eighth grade. He had struggled for a long time um, in school um, with ADHD, which at the time we didn't, you know, I didn't really realize um, how much he was struggling. You know, if I, if I had any regrets, I'd say that I didn't really listen to that part. At some point, I believe um, he, he had tried medications on his own for ADHD. And I think that was when it really started feeling like there was something out there that could help him. And it just went on from there. There was marijuana use, there was any, you know, there was not that much drinking, but there was, you know, there was somebody in the area that had opiates and they started, the kids started using the opiates. He didn't say it in these words, but it came out as like an aha moment for him when everything just disappeared. All of the struggles he had, like all the pressure, all the stress that he felt just disappeared. I didn't realize until about, he was about 17 that there was an issue. And I think at the end of junior year is when he, he began injecting heroin. Um, I still was not really aware of that until someone knocked on the door, a friend of a, of a mother of a friend knocked on my door and told me what was happening. And I just, I, I couldn't believe it. When I realized that he was using heroin, I started doing some research online and um, you know, everywhere I went to, to look for help, it was a treatment center who was looking for cash or really good insurance, who wanted him to leave the state. So I was really not getting the help that I needed. I didn't know who to contact locally, and no one really talked about it at that time. I was really overwhelmed by the lack of information and the, the lack of resources, and even in the school. The school knew that there were things going on with him, and, you know, you know, I did talk to uh, people at the school, but nobody seemed to have any idea on where to send them or what to do. It was so difficult to manage what was going on with us. And I don't, I, I don't remember a lot of it, honestly. I don't remember what went on for a couple of years. I do remember just always being in fear and always trying to figure out what was going on and then worrying about the other kids. And my husband was very angry and our relationship started deteriorating because he was so angry. And then everybody started siding against each other. You know, it was my husband and the other kids against me and Rory, which made it even harder because we weren't on the same page. You know, it was out of fear. He was, a lot of it was out of fear that he had too. He just expressed it different. You know, my thing was I was going to try to control what was going on and get him help. My husband's was just, you know, he was just angry at him. So my son Rory went to treatment for the first time um, after he got the possession charge and the DUI. Um, he was, that was, uh, it was a week after his 18th birthday. So I think he was shocked because he was charged as an adult because he forgot he was 18. Um, so that was the first time he went to treatment in inpatient program. He went, I think about 20, over 20 times he went to an inpatient program. It turns out that what was really going on too was he had an underlying issue of um, the ADHD, but also he was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. He'd gone to treatment so many times and in the treatment centers, they just really um, ignored the diagnosis and just treated him for the substance use and never really even talked about the bipolar disorder. In fact, the only time that they really did treat him for the mental health um, issues 
was in jail. So he spent four months, well, three months in the jail just getting stable for his bipolar disorder, which is pretty telling that all these years of him going to treatment, that's how long it took to get him stable. And it was also telling that they, the treatment center that was a long-term program would not take him until the jail stabilized him on his medications. So once he left the jail, he was on his medications and they never changed them. They just kept them the way they were for the six months. And in that outpatient program, they still did not talk about his co-occurring treatment and didn't discuss his medications with him. He came out of the inpatient program already a mess because I didn't even understand the directions and I, I don't know how he would have. There's stigma for mental health, even more so than substance use, there's more stigma. You know, it was hard, it was very hard. And there are some people that, you know, look differently at you and there weren't people, you know, if my son had any other illness, people would be rallying around and help me with my kids or kids and, you know, bring me meals and nobody did that kind of thing. They just kind of left us and, you know, we were, we were really isolated. I learned about the partnership to end addiction through a friend of mine who found them um, when doing some research, um, trying to get some help for her son. We both felt the same way about our children that we didn't, we didn't want to walk away. We didn't want to do tough love. We wanted to understand and get educated and be able to communicate with them. Um, so this is exactly what the partnership did. The partnership has been, uh, they've been my biggest support. I credit them I had a great relationship with my son, Rory. Losing him was so difficult, but through the partnership, I learned um, how to communicate with him, and we had a great relationship. And he, he was brave, and he, he allowed me to tell his story to help other people. I don't think that would have happened. I know that wouldn't have happened if I didn't have the, the tools that I learned and you know the education and I supported him the way I did like he knew he knew that no matter what that I was there for him you know and because he told me the things he told me I helped other families my name is Tanya my son Rory was loyal passionate funny and uh, we miss him terribly